Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead, get this channel, subscribe, share, leave some messages or comments. Thumbs up for the like. Notification bell to be informed on all episodes when they drop. Exposing Prison Game on YouTube or on any other social media platform. It's become a big deal nowadays. There's a growing interest in what goes on in the prison system. It's actually nothing new, if you think about it. There's been an interest in the prison system as far back as the prison system was invented or created. There's always been some kind of fascination with it. You know, what goes on in there? How does the shit function? How does it run? What do people do in there? How do people have such a great artistic talent and use it for the bad and, and don't do nothing with it when they get out? There's a lot of things, a lot of ingredients, actually, that go into the prison cake that makes it much larger than just some guy getting on here telling you a whole bunch of war stories and pumping your head up to make you think that, you know, he done killed 10 million people and he was pushing all this weight and doing this and running every yard from coast to coast. It's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot of things that go into it. I mean, prison in itself is something that the interest in has been growing over the last, I would say, almost 20 years. You know, you had TV shows like Oz, you've had Orange is the New Black, Lock Up, and, and Lock Up Abroad, and, and, and all these other ones, and, and Inside the Penitentiary, and all these arts and entertainment and History Channel documentaries that show you what goes on in there, and you get a lot of these clowns that are on there, and they expose a lot of game <clears throat> in these shows, and this is where game exposing was started. But how has it crossed over into the world of social media is something that's relatively new. Maybe about five, six years tops is as far back as when it started. You had the, the original, like, I guess you can call them founding fathers. Like Joe in the After Prison show, Big Herc with his fresh out. <clears throat> and since that time, prison YouTube genre channels have blown up to the point of saturation. It's like literally at this point right now, you have a different guy telling the same story over and over and over again. But people are just locked in. You have some that don't really go that far. Some that don't really aren't very colorful and articulate when they break it down. And you got others that have learned how to use that neuro-linguistic programming in order to captivate their audience and they're blowing up. And in a lot of ways, you have to ask yourself, what is going too far as far as exposing prison game as far, as far as exposing the inner workings of it the secrets what certain things mean we're going to talk about all that right here and you're going to understand why i've chosen to take a different route when it comes to a lot of this stuff and a lot of people tell me that that's that's the reason why that i will never get like a million subscribers or something we'll get into all that but let's start out with exposing game when does it go too far because we're not simply talking about how to prepare a top ramen 20 different ways. We're not talking about doing a, um, a vlog type of a setting where you're talking about people and the dumbest criminals or the craziest criminals or, or you know, what this person did or who these people are or, you know, talking about recent notable snitches like Takashi 69 or, or anybody else or Jeffrey Epstein. We're not talking about that. We are talking about the meat and potatoes, the underground workings of the prison system and how the population functions inside of there, the secrets, the codes, how they basically conceal contraband and get away with it and how they approach people in order to get more. Those things is what's crossing the line. And it's already having a negative effect on people that live in these institutions across the country. Some of you may say, well, too bad. Who cares? Who cares if they get their contraband taken? We want to hear how it's done. It should be exposed. Well, you don't live in there, and it's not really for you to decide how they get treated or not. It's, it's, the person's been taken out of society, and they're in prison already. They are no threat to you or anybody else out here, regardless. If they have a phone or not, it doesn't matter. If they have drugs on them or if they have playing cards or if they have smut books, or, or, or what female CO they're tapping, or anything like that, is really not for you to decide. 
because you're not the sentencing court. You're not the judge. You know, the judge sentenced him to serve this amount of time incarceration, and that's that. But exposing the game. Now, this recently came towards me. I had one of my homies reach out to me from the inside, called me up on the phone, and basically told me to cease and desist my YouTube channel. And I asked him, well, why? And he's on there like, well, they just shook down this whole spot. And basically, when we asked him what was going on, they said, well, you can thank YouTube for that. And it was some white dude with a bunch of tattoos that's exposing all this game. And we just thought it was you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's basically getting low-key saying that I'm on here snitching, that I'm on here basically debriefing on YouTube because it's the same thing. The code of silence that, that, that I had learned many years ago. And I said, whoa, 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 you got me confused. That's not me. I don't get on here and do that. I do different shit. I'm basically talking about different things. I don't expose any kind of game like that. He later told me that they found out who it was, and I left it at that. But... Here's the thing, and a lot of people got to understand, right? You could talk about Top Ramen's tattoo guns, Pruno. You could talk about, you know, the Butt Bandit and different things like that, and that's all fine and good. But when you get on here and you start talking about how you conceal shanks, how you make shanks or fierros or whatever, how you conceal cell phones, how you get cell phones in, what you're hiding these cell phones in, you're making, you're manufacturing shells and sticking them in the wall, you're sticking them in the detergent, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're getting on here showing them the code, the sign language, whatnot, all that, talking about what your gang had done, what these tattoos mean, and all this stuff like that, you are basically snitching. Whether you know it or not, you might as well take the stands. You might as well take the stands and start pointing everybody out, because that's basically what you've done. You have basically called 911 at this point in time. When you take it to that level, exposing game and going too far is when you break down the code, is when you break down the stash spots, when you break down how you manufacture a fiero. I could get on here and show you how to make one out of the simplest stuff that you never would have even thought you could make a fiero out of. And I could show you how effective it could be. I could show you how to make a blowgun and shoot somebody in the eye with it. I could show you how to break out of your handcuff keys. But I don't do all that because it's exposing game. And it reveals to the other audience that's watching, which is law enforcement, because they're on here and they're taking notes. The disclaimer in YouTube is clearly stated in the policy. We share everything with law enforcement. And they don't necessarily have to because law enforcement is watching us anyways. They're on all of these channels. And you can't throw a rock in any one direction without hitting a new prison genre YouTube channel. It's all done through collaborations and interviews and whatnot, and now it's even gone to the point to where you got parody channels out there. You know, it's, it's saturated to the point to where it's gone from something that was educational, something that was beneficial, to something that has come that's become quite silly in a lot of ways. People are trying so hard to prove to you how gangster they are with a lot of this shit. And the old code that I subscribe to, what I learned from the older gente is the real gangster is the one that's quiet. The real gangster is the one that lays back in the cut. I don't have to get on here and tell you how badass I am, how many people I stabbed, how many yards I was running, all this and this and this and that. Because really, to me, I would be sacrificing my dignity and self-respect and selling myself to the celebrity shit show in order just to entertain you. And I like to think that I can bring you a quality channel without exposing all this game. Now, there's a lot of channels out there that are doing a good job and still they continue to do a good job to this day. Some of them don't get the recognition they deserve, and that's, that's channels like Dub C. He's showing what a lifer who spent his life in prison since he was a kid can do and accomplish when he gets out. You got other shows like, like, like Lance Off the Yard who's on here now, and he's basically giving you his mindset every single day, his like daily, almost like daily affirmations of what he goes through day to day. You got Josh from Lockdown 23 and 1, and his channel has always been about kind of like educating through humor and entertainment without exposing all the game. I mean, I remember when I first went on this man's show and he told me, man, I got to and, and, and I didn't even have to tell him. And there's a lot of shit that I can't talk about. He already told me straight up, man, you know, keep all the secret business out of it, all the, all the, the, the game. 
And he doesn't do that either. He doesn't expose it and put it out there. He doesn't need to in order to blow his channel up because he does it in he does his channel in a way that, that people appreciate his content. But there's other people out there that have blown up on the backs of other people and on exposing game. And there's people that are starting to blow up on exposing game and on talking about things that they shouldn't even be talking about. There was even one, one cat in particular that was talking about how a homie, one of my people from my car was in the shoe and had broken his, slipped his cuffs and started beating up the CO with his own nightstick, with his own nightstick. And he's talking about this on a YouTube channel, mind you. Now think about this for a minute. The man that did that, you don't know the circumstances of the case. The CO knows that he got beat up by this dude, but the CO doesn't know what he got beat up with. Because he's like, you know, his, his mind shut down. All he's thinking about is survival at that point. The tower may not have even seen it. They may not have any footage on how it went down, but they know it went down. Now there's a difference between an assault on a peace officer with your fists and there's a difference between assault with great bodily injury on a peace officer with a deadly weapon. Now that's a fucking life sentence. You're washed up. And what you do is when you get on a YouTube channel and you talk about something like this, you have basically made yourself a character witness because you know that you're being recorded because you're the one that's recording it. They could use that testimony in court against this man and they could wash him with your testimony. You became a character witness, an eyewitness account. You don't have to agree to it at that point. The minute you put the video out, YouTube says, we share this with law enforcement. And why do you think they'd say that? Because if I get on here and I talk to you about a murder that happened down the road, and I say, you know, this old cat Willie just, you know, pulled out a pistol and shot this dude and killed him, and then he buried the pistol behind the dumpster in my alley. You don't think the cops ain't going to see that and go dig the pistol up and then go bust Willie and use my testimony? My video, I don't even have to go to court. They don't even have to ever tell me they're using it. That's when I tell you that exposing game goes too far. It's one thing for you to educate yourself and to be fascinated by this stuff that's going on in the prison system. But then there's another one that basically says that there are a lot of things that we shouldn't even be talking about on here. There's a lot of game that we shouldn't be exposing because we're making it hard for them. You may think it's a positive thing, but the ripple effect of it actually has a negative consequence on people that are still incarcerated, and they don't have all the rights that we got. We made it out. Some of those people may never be getting out, and we ain't more righteous than they are. You know, we're just the same kind of people as them. We just made it out. You know, it's like, what we could do is I can go to my refrigerator, and I could put something in the microwave or on the stove. I could go to a restaurant. I get in my car, and I could drive all over the state. I could go boating, fishing, kayaking, skydiving, hang gliding, I can get in a hot air balloon, I can go to an amusement park, get on the internet, play video games, have sex with a woman, do all these things that they can't do. Why would I want to get on here and make their life any harder than it already is? And it doesn't matter if they're good or bad or whatever. I just find it fascinating that people get on here and expose game to that degree. And then they have the fucking nerve to sit here and talk about snitches and rats and two fivers and dropouts and all that wonk wonk blah blah blah. You know, when they basically snitch in themselves. Like I said, they put themselves on the stands. And I have people telling me, man, JD, if only you would get on there and tell us what you know, your channel will blow up to like 200, 300 sub thousand subscribers. And it's like, what am I supposed to fucking debrief for you? What are you, the FBI? Tell you what I know? It's like, if that's how my channel is going to blow up, then, then I don't want no part of it. Because I've said it before, I'm not on here to monetize. I'm not trying to get rich off of YouTube. I'm not trying to become a celebrity. I'm basically a vlogger, and, and I give you like my opinions and how I feel about shit. And I also give you some knowledge on how to break free from your self-made prison, or how to stay out of the system, or not go to the system itself. You know, how to unplug from the herd mentality. How to do all these things that I had learned in prison. Like, prison had shaped the way that I think. Because I wasn't only in there just straight, like, exercising my body or anything or playing pinnacle. I'm in there ed educating and exercising my mind. And the knowledge that I got is based off of what I learned in there. And the way I see the world now that I'm out here, I've learned a great deal. 
And I'm all the way caught up with the times. I know everything that's going on. A lot of people in there are behind. They don't even know what, what people are wearing out here, what the new trends are, what's popular and what's not. I've updated myself to all that. And I don't need the money. I live a very comfortable life. I got an awesome career. I got a roof over my head. I got a car. I got a, I got a bank account. I got credit cards. I got my financial situation intact and in complete control. I don't have baby mamas all over the place, child support, alimony, back taxes, fines, none of that stuff. I ain't got none of that going on. I got complete control of my life. So if anything, you see a man that is self-made after prison and has created everything from nothing and is pushing forward, that should be entertaining enough. But if it's not, it's no real, like, sweat off my back. I ain't going to lose sleep over it if I lose a few subscribers here to there, if I, if I gain a few subscribers. I'm on here to basically give this to you, and it's not going to make or break me. You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of promotions and stuff I could do to grow it, but it's not about that for me. It's basically me letting you know that, that, that I'm keeping it real and 100 from the gate. I don't need to put a, like a whole bunch of fucking dudes in my video with me to talk about how much of a gangster I am and, and, and talk about how bad I was. And if I was in this prison system over here, that, that, that they wouldn't be doing that to me or this to me or that to me or whatever. I mean, to me, if you're trying that hard to convince your audience that you a gangster, you ain't a gangster. And in my world, you would have never been accepted as one other than just a phony and a big mouth and somebody that we can't trust. And you probably end up getting smoked back in the days, talking like that and doing that kind of shit. That's just the way the game runs. And in some circles and in some places, it's still like that. I got a lot of homies that, that, that I've rolled with, that I was locked up with, that won't even come on this channel, that won't even put their face on TV or on, on YouTube or anywhere. Even when we in the inside and the media comes around and we're not, we're not interviewing, you know? That's why I take the direction that I take because it's the safe road. It's the road where I know that I keep my dignity intact and I know that I'm not making it hard for the next man and I'm not exposing anything or doing anything wrong. And, and my shit's already been checked out by all the right people and they're basically like, you know, handle your business, get your hustle on, homie. But if I was on here doing all that other shit and Lord forbid that I end up in a bogus case somewhere in California or something like that, I'm going to have somebody to answer to when I get back on the inside. And a lot of these people that are doing this, you best believe that somebody on the inside is not happy about it. And I know that for a fact. There's a lot of somebodies that ain't happy about it. So just something to think about. And, and if you're thinking about going that road and you think that's the only way that you can grow your channel, well then do it. But understand that the negative ripple effect that you're creating is much bigger than the message you're trying to put out. Basically, stick to a positive message. Like me, Prison Break Raw, I give it to you abrasive and arrogant. I get under your skin in order to make you think in a lot of ways. And, and in a lot of ways, I just, I just stick to something like this. But I'm all over the place with everything that I do because I like to keep it interesting and I like to keep it fresh. But don't expect me to expose any kind of secrets and tell you what different gangs' tattoos look like and what sign language is and how to sh sharpen up a shank. And, 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 and how you can make a gas bomb to, to throw at a CO through the trace slot or anything like that. I'm not going to do it. So there it is in a nutshell. Exposing game. Which line wins going too far and when you're crossing the line is basically just everything that I outlined. So if that's what you're doing, if you entertained by that, good for you. But won't get it from me. And that's all it is to it. Prison Break Raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, not sugar coat, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that dick of reality, and I'm out.